Hello and welcome back to another episode of Fairman Life at Ford. This morning myself and dad are going moving some heifers. Um, so I'm just going to show you that now up first. There is a gate that we have. Dad made it, it's an old arm off a sprayer. And so we just have it there handy so that um, it stop the cattle going out into the road and anyone coming in. So now myself and Prune just have to catch up to the heifers and they're going up into the field paradise. Sit. Wait. Wait. Emily's very happy with it. Uh, she wants this big box taken off now for holding the grass. Don't really need it because we're bringing it back and forth to another farm. So it was kind of a, a gamble buying this seal. Uh, the man, the old guy we bought it off, he thought the engine was seized. But I wasn't sure myself. The only reason I bought it was because it was a diesel. And we seen them. Uh, all the council workers over here use them. They're um, a, a good lawnmower. So uh, we said, even if we had to get an engine uh, to be still worth it, to be a good one. Because we went in looking at new lawnmowers and second-hand ones and their little rubbish yokes and the cost of fortune. So we actually flicked the coin whether we'd buy this or not. So we bought it and... Uh, I took the engine out but it was only a bearing on the bottom that was seized and uh, I actually left the bearing out because it, it was for a different thing and uh, it's going to find its sense so uh, it'll do all we want to do because uh, all our places on the other farm wouldn't be the, to be rough enough and plus you have over here you have these moles come up and you hit big junks of clay every few minutes so uh, that's it. So I'm going to load it up in the trailer now in a few minutes, take the box off and uh, bring it over to the other farm. So Emily wants to cut all around the houses and Laura wants to cut around her garden. And uh, that's it. So 
So, Emily wants laughers for over another house. And uh, she came up with this idea. But uh, I have to do it. Uh, so it's basically a 60 litre drum, or an old oil drum that we use for oil. And I have uh, to cut out some old plywood, fit in. Then just put that hedge in around the sharp so no one will get cut and spray it black. I just have to sandpaper off the shine. If you don't take the shine off it, the spray won't stick to it. So uh, here's what I did earlier. <laughs> So there it is, the finished thing. Uh, the bedside locker. And it's actually, to buy the lockers would have been the same price as the drum of oil. So we're getting four drums of oil, free. So that's all. Now they're punctured up. Yeah. So, got this in Amazon as well. You weamer out the hole. Simple as. Check it with a bit of. Yeah, it's a good kit. What's the Yorkshire put in there? Uh, comes with the plug. Um, it's a good heavy duty system. Plus, you have a longer one for a bigger tire on a tractor. Uh, it has a plier, has an extension. Or a pressure gauge for checking the pressure. Uh, and it also comes with um, spare dust caps, the yoke for re treading. Sometimes it gets damaged to re tap out, tread. And I don't know what they are. I don't know what they are. There must be extensions for uh, a valve and uh, no, no valves and let's see what this is. A knife. Oh that's a knife for cutting it off, yeah. You're smart. I know. And you cut off that. So then, that's it. So oh, Laura will give you the links and the down below, wherever down below is. <laughs> and uh, that's our first puncture on the high ducks. And we mended it ourselves without having a bed today, that's all it. That's it. So we have four of our bows now to get it and uh, two more to go in I let them in gradually and I usually keep them beside one another in gates so they'll play around and act the bollocks for a while and uh, it's good to keep them a few of them together like that because it keeps them uh, fit you have an old bull in a shed. You have an old bull in a shed in his own and then you let him out of cows. He's, he's stiff and he's not able to do all that. So they'll get a bit of meal there. And uh, they have hay there and a lot of straw. And they'll be there till October. And there's two more to go in now tomorrow. 
and uh, the older bulls are down the shed, as Laura said. The older bulls fight a lot more aggressive and either be afraid they might hurt themselves. Now you could put a young bull with the older bulls and he'll run away from them, but the older they get, the more braver they get and they want to see who bosses. So uh, they'll quieten down now after a bit. It's the cool of the morning, so I want them to get all the fighting done before it gets too hot because um, then they'll start sweating. Another thing is we have no, we have no cattle anywhere near them. Now usually if you had cows outside the ditch there, they would try to get out to them. So we'll let them settle down there now and we'll just keep an eye on them for a few hours to make sure that they don't all start to pick on one. But okay. Okay, so I am now down in the field, we call it field. So it's um, a small field, well sheltered, and we're going to be putting the cows that are close to the cabin up here. So while I am down here checking the fence before putting them in, I said I would just talk to you guys a bit about what we're going at because when I go back to the shed, it's going to be a little bit noisy. Um, so our cabin season is due to start around the 15th of August this year. and. I'll show you now in a second. We have just weaned the um, weanlings off the cows. So we weaned them about two, three days ago, and now we're going to be taking the cows away from the sheds. So we leave them in the shed so they can kind of see each other for the first while, and then we'll take the cows away and leave the weanlings in the shed until they're settled. There's most of the cows are scanned, so the cows that are closest to Kevin are going into this field here. So this field is just the other end of the sheds, um, so it's on the main farm, and we'll be able to keep an eye on them and they'll. It's a nice area for them and we'll be able to keep an eye on them for when they start calving and it's very easy if one is calving or has calved to bring her straight into the sheds um the calving pen that we have is just right there beside it and then after that we have the cows that are um due in a while so they'll be like end of end of season calving and they are going to be staying in the shed because dad will be then bringing them off to another field in the trailer and we also have the cows that haven't haven't been scanned yet so as we've just taken away the bulls we will be scanning very soon um, so they have yet to be scanned as well so we're sorting out the cows now and then all the cows will be taken out of the sheds and away from the wayland okay so the cows up there mam is now going to unlock the heads unlock the locking barriers from the ones that are near to cabin and the ones that have to be scanned so they're all going down that field that I just checked and then the ones that are calving later um, that will be bringing them off to a few so we'll walk here And then the ones up in the shed, there's six left. So we had them in two different pens just to make sure that we had enough locking spaces um, because the, the locking barriers are very handy for sorting them out like that. Not to be having to run them up a crush or, or any other way of doing it. Um, so we had them in two different pens and now there are six cows between the two pens that are calving later on in the year. 
so that'll be bring them out to the field and they're just there tomorrow this uh, area out in the pad so I think dad already talked about moving them out here these are the younger bulls and then there's two bulls down in the bull shed now and we have one more to go out there and then there's one bull or no sorry there's two bulls that are staying out in the fields and they're going to be out with cows that are already in calf we'll still be staying out with them in the fields and that's all our bulls sorted then they're six, they're not due till November, I think. So they can go off to a field in the second farm. How many cows down there need to be scanned? Twelve, I think. Twelve cows? No, Paco. Wait. Okay, so I've just finished feeding now for the evening and before I finish up this video, I'm going to go and show you the maids and how it's doing. Okay, so here it is. Um, obviously, the edge is going to be a little bit shorter, but it's actually pretty tall. Compared to last year, it's really, really good. And it's definitely taller than me, but that is not hard to beat. Okay, so this maze here that I'm currently in is Pioneer Seed. Um, so this is the first the first one that we sowed. Um, so I think this was sowed, would have been the last week in April, so about three months ago now. Then there's the other field that we showed you guys sowing as well. That is a different, different seed that we got. So this one is a new one, we've never tried it before, but when we got the seed it was looking very small. We sowed it anyways because we had to get it in the ground, we were late sowing. And we did get different seeds, so bigger what we'd normally get um, for the other place. But this has actually turned out good. It's definitely better than last year. Um, we've definitely got a lot more bulk this year. Um, so we just have to see how the cob turns out on this, we don't know yet. But hopefully we'll be cutting this in September along with the others and we'll be able to compare a bit better and see um, between the two different seeds if this one and I don't know what the other one's called which one is better so we'll know again for next year well yeah, this is definitely growing better than last year last year we had bad crop we didn't have bulk but was actually it was actually very yellow when we cut it there was good um cobs on it but it was yeah there was a lot less of it we only got one pitch out of it we're hoping this year with roughly the same amount of hectares that we'll actually get two cuts out of it um, but then yeah again we'll have to see what the cobs are like on this one this one actually grew so fast that we didn't get to spray it so you see there's actually a fair few weeds in there um, but as it has grown tall now it has actually shot up the past few weeks um, that is just going to smother in all the weeds and especially now when we do get into really hot weather in August normally well that's what we're used to anyways we don't know what's going to turn out this year but when we do get into hot weather now that it has grown up quite a bit and it's very leafy um the ground won't dry up as quick as it did last year it just dried up straight away so we're hoping this year again to have a better better maize um, so we use the maize for the wainlands that's the main reason we grow it um we do also give a bit to the goats it is all around just a good feed but for the wailings it really does make a difference in the winter especially for the the, the autumn born wailings um when they're in during the winter we give them this and it works out really well for us every other year so we're happy that this year the maize is growing a bit better um because we've just been having droughts for the past few years so i'm going to walk a little bit further in and see So we're very happy with the maize this year. Um, 
the other crop the other field it was sowed um beginning of may so it was 10 days after this one so it is a little bit shorter but it's still doing well and the other problem that we do get over here with the maize is wild boar wild boar will go into the maize and they'll actually make circles and knock it all down on the ground and they'll eat the cob off it then so we haven't had any or we don't see any patches knocked down in here this year and um hope there's no wild boar in here with me now that's mainly when you get the cobs on it that's when they'll come in and knock it down and eat all the cobs off the ground and it'll just be everywhere and you can't gather it up once it's completely flattened like that so hopefully this year touch wood we don't get any any wild boar in here but there is the the shafts of the hunt and I'm not exactly sure what season they're on and off but they generally keep control of it as well so that's that for the update on the maize on the bulls i did forget to mention um about the belgian blue bulls that left <clears throat> so the belgian blue bulls we do buy and sell a lot of bulls um just to keep keep it all fresh especially because we keep a lot of heifers but the belgian blues so you've seen us we sold the last two that we had and they were getting old so we had to kind of sell them on but normally we were looking to buy new bulls new belgian blues um but all the bulls that we could see at the moment are just young bulls they're about a year old when generally belgian blues don't actually really work until they're about i think it's 24 months so two years so we haven't got any new bulls this year we like using belgian blues with the limousine because when we are changing the bulls so say when we're taking out the bull that's been with the cows um that bull might have missed a few cows it happens sometimes especially with the younger bulls <clears throat> we buy them young it gets them going but um the first year they might miss a few and so putting in the putting in the belgian blues just helps that they'll kind of get the missed ones and it's easy to tell because you can tell the difference between a belgian blue calf and a limousine the difference in color a belgian blue calf generally comes out black with the limousine and the limousine is obviously red and as for the charolais bulls now it's been four years since we've had a charolais bull on the farm and um, we got rid of them because we were having a few problems calving with them they are a lot harder calving um to have a good big bull and nice calves out of them yeah you, you do get a bigger vet bill because you do get a lot more caesareans with them and um yeah you just have a lot more problems there so we switched over to limousine we find them a lot easier calving there you can get um you can actually get easy calving Shirley bulls and there's actually one of our neighbors over the road she has some but um her calves don't look too well out of it they do look quite small and even she is now thinking of switching over to limousine so for now the limousine we find to be the best and the belgian blue are great as well so we like to use the mix of the two and who knows we might get if we land on some good belgian blue bulls we might get another two but until then we have the limousine bulls and they work well at the moment as well so we'll see in the next scanning um hopefully that'll be in a few weeks time so that's that for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.